Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is air. A-I-R. Really? You bet your life! And here he is, the one, the only... That's me, Groucho Marx. And with $2,000 for one of our couples tonight. Fenneman, who's place to try for it? Well, a bachelor and a spinster, Groucho, selected by our studio audience just before we went on the air. Glad to uh, Their names are Ida Easley and Jack Wayne. And here they come now. Come on in here, folks, to meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, kids. And if Thank you say the secret word, you'll divide $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Uh, Ida Easley, huh? Ida Easley. Oh, that's an easy name to remember. <laughs> You're the Spencer, eh? I am. Mm-hmm. Let me see your Spence. <laughs> Where are you from, Ida? I'm from Taylorville, Illinois. Where? Taylorville, Illinois. Taylorville? Did you have a, a job, Ida? I'm a matron of the Douglas Aircraft Company. <laughs> Of course you realize that half of that swag belongs to Mr. Yes, Wayne over here, huh? <laughs> I think he's more worried than I am, so well. I have a hold of it. <laughs> well, eventually he may be holding you and the $50, eh? Well, Jack, uh... I will tell. Well, what do you, what do, you do, Jack? Oh, I run a streetcar. Uh, where are you from, uh, Jack? In heart of, born in heart of Boston. Why did you leave the, uh, Bean Town? Oh, my feet got itchy now in the room. You went to Rome, and how'd you like it there? <laughs> Where do you run your trolley? On the track. <laughs> Caught me napping, eh? <laughs> I suppose that's one of the little jokes you streetcar men use to amuse each other back in the car barn, is that it? That's an old joke. There's that. Well, it may, it may interest you to know that while you're knocking each other out back in the car barn, the city's pulling up the tracks to make way for a bus line. <laughs> Jack, how come you're a bachelor? Is it because in your job you see too much of women? Oh, I see plenty of them. You do, huh? You could see a lot more of them if you step off your streetcar and watch them climb on. <laughs> I always get on last. I think it's politeness, but it isn't real. <laughs> Jack, if you found the right woman, would you be interested in matrimony? <laughs> oh, I guess I would. What would you consider the right woman? Oh, a housekeeper, a good housekeeper, a good cook. Then I go to a ball game with me once in a while. You don't need one girl. What you need is a YWCA girl. <laughs> How old are you, Ida, if that isn't too... Uh, oh, I think I'm about his age. <laughs> How old Frankly, you don't care how old he is, do you? <laughs> You're his age anyway, no matter how old he is. Are you a good cook, Ida? Well, I think I'm good. You like baseball? Oh, very much. You follow it uh, quite closely? Yes, I keep up the game. I see. Well, I'm an average fan, too. What do you think of Sugar Ray Robinson's chances this year? Huh? <laughs> you think he's going to break Babe Ruth's record? Oh, I think he stands a very good chance. <laughs> But on the other hand, don't forget, he still has to be Gussie Moran. I know, I understand. Well, you can't blame a girl for trying, I always say. As a matter of fact, I never said that before in my life. I don't know why I lie this way. Would you Would you get married tonight if the right man came along and uh, knocked you off your feet? Oh, I think I would. You will. Look out for Ding Dong Daddy, are you? He can knock you off your feet and charge you 11 cent car fare at the same time. Well, you certainly make a nice couple. Just remember, none but the brave deserve the fair, Jack. Always remember that, huh? And you're just the one to collect it. Now, we're going to play You Bet Your Life for $2,000. All right, now let's see if you two will get a chance at the $2,000. Fenneman, explain the rules. All right. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $2,000 question at the end of the show. You see, our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. 
All right, here we go. Let's say I'll hide and build you $20. You selected birds, animals, and people as your category. Now, here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you try? $10. $10. What animal do you associate with Jonah? A whale. The whale is right. Now, talk right up. <laughs> All right, you got $30. Remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. Now, how much of the 30 will you try? Uh, 20 20 What animal do you associate with the Pied Piper? Oh, uh... <laughs> Take a look at Jack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they followed her up the street. The Piper. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. It's rats. You you, you, yeah. you were on the right track. How much have they got now? They now have $10, Groucho. Oh, that's a shame. Mm, you're down that's to $10. That's a shame. We're down right. to $10. Here's your third question. How much of the time will you try? $5. $5. Is that all right, Jack? All right. What animal do you associate with Daniel and the Bible? Um, lion. Lion. The lion is right. Huh? <laughs> all right, you got $15, and here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 15 will you risk? Well, let's take ten. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. What animal do you associate with Lady Godiva? Oh, the horse. That's right, a horse is correct. And wind up with a grand total of twenty-five dollars. Don't forget, you won how much? Twenty-five dollars. Twenty-five dollars. You won a hundred dollars. That's a hundred and twenty-five dollars. Thanks and good luck. Well, Groucho, our, our next couple has been in a waiting room off stage, so, of course, they don't know the secret word is air. True, true. Okay, fellas, you can bring them in now. We invited some lady barbers to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Maybell Taylor. Her partner is a married man, Mr. Thomas DeSilver. And here they are, folks. I'd like you to meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Dutch life, and if you say the secret word, you'll spend $100 between you. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Uh, Maybell Taylor, is that right? That's right. And, uh, Thomas De Silva. You're a lady barber, Maybell? That's right. Where, where are you from, Mabel? Montana. Montana? Where about? Culbertson, in Montana. And, uh, Thomas De Silva, you're, you're a married man, huh? That's right. Is that your only claim to distinction, Thomas? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of work do you do, Tommy? Retired police captain. We yeah. are. How long? I'm glad I found that out. How long have you been married? Sixteen years. Do you remember how you met your wife, Yes, but it's a long story. Well, keep it down to 1,500 words, will you? <laughs> I have to be in Pittsburgh a week from next Wednesday. <laughs> okay, go ahead. How'd you meet your wife? We went down to Wildwood, New Jersey. Got a couple of bathing suits and took her down to Wildwood, New Jersey. Put a bathing suit on and then gave her the engagement ring. <laughs> You're a pretty shrewd cookie, aren't you? Huh? So I was seen her in the bathing suit, and I started singing a proposal to her. You sang a proposal? Yeah. Well, how did you sing a proposal to her? I'd be calling her sweetheart and gave her the engagement ring. Would you mind singing a no, new... Uh... Singing? Oh. Well, go ahead. <laughs> Let me call you sweetheart. I'm in love with you. <laughs> Let me hear you whisper that you love me. And she consented to marry you after that? <laughs> well, that's the first time I ever sang a chorus in five keys. <laughs> now, Mabel, are you married? No, I'm not. You're not married, huh? Would you get married to a man who sang like that to you? Oh, certainly. I never met a lady barber before. Aren't they pretty rare? Well, I'd say there's uh, possibly 15 of us in the city of Los Angeles. No, that's medium rare. Now, what made you decide? <laughs> what made you decide to become a barber? Or a tonsorial artist, is that what? I uh, wanted to make money enough to see myself through nurses' training. And? I'm still barbering. <laughs> What's the difference between a lady barber and a man barber? Uh, there's several. There are several differences? There's several differences. Well, I'm relieved to hear that. Huh? You'd better clarify it, Mabel. There's a Heimlich in Idaho who may have forgotten. <laughs> well, we have a lighter touch and 
Uh, we don't talk an ear off of you. What do you do? Just shave it off, huh? <laughs> I suppose you had a scrapbook where you keep all your clippings, Mabel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Do any of your customers flirt with you, Mabel? The male customers? Oh, uh, well, they're not really serious with me. And how do you handle these Romeos? Oh, I... They like it. Well, how do you kid them? Do you tell them jokes? Yes, occasionally. Well, tell us a joke. Go ahead. Pretend... <laughs> Pretend I'm sitting in your chair and you want me to forget how much all this is going to cost me. Now you go ahead and tell me a joke. Do you know the best way to save your hair? Yes, put it in a cigar box. That's an old joke. Do you know a way to... Tell me another joke, huh? Do you know a way to avoid falling hair? Yes, just step nimbly to one side, huh? That's even older than the other joke, huh? You know any more jokes, uh, Mabel? No, I believe not. Go on, admit it. I'm too fast for you, I'm able. Well, well grass, your uh, hair is getting a little bit thin. Yeah, well, uh, grass doesn't grow on a busy street, then. Well, I was just going to say that grass doesn't grow on a cement highway, either. <laughs> Mabel, I know just how your customers feel. <laughs> Bloody but unbound. <laughs> well, all right. Now we're going to play you bet your life, huh? Now uh, we'll see how you two uh, make out in the battle for the two thousand dollars. You got to work together as a team and run your twenty dollars into more than our other couple. I can't tell you how much the other couples won, but Phantom is going to remind our listeners. The bachelor and the spinster won twenty-five dollars. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you twenty dollars. You selected nicknames of famous cities as your category. Here's your first question: How much of the twenty will you try? Tommy, wake yeah. up. Ten dollars. You're going to ignore Mabel, huh? <laughs> what city is known as the city of brotherly love? Philadelphia. Philadelphia. That's where you... <laughs> Bill and Roy Groucho, they have thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. Remember, you're going for two thousand dollars tonight. Now, how much is the thirty? Will you try? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go right up. Mm-hmm. I think it's twenty. All right. What city is known as the biggest little city in the world? Reno, Nevada. Reno, Nevada is right. Now, now, $50. Here's the third question. Now, how much will you bet? 50. 50. What city is known as the Mile High City? Denver, Colorado. Denver, Colorado. And they've climbed $100. You've climbed as high as Denver, Colorado. Now, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 100 will you try? Make it all. The last question. Yes, here's the last question. Let it go. Let it go. You're going to shoot the works, huh? What city is known as the Smoky City? Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Right. 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 We invited to the show tonight some professional golfers and some singing teachers. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Lucia Liveret and Mr. Paul Runyon, and here they come. Folks, I'd like you to meet Roger Mark. <laughs> Welcome to your Bet Your Life, folks, and if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Lucia Liberette, huh? You're a singing teacher. Sounds like a pretty good record, uh, Lucia. Where are you from? Sing Sing? <laughs> I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, huh? Yes, you sir. sing the St. Louis blues? <laughs> well, no, not quite. Paul Runyon, it's nice to see you again. I'm sure everyone is familiar with your name. What did you say your name was? <laughs> Paul Runyon. Paul Runyon, huh? See, there, even you're familiar with it, huh? <laughs> well, let's see. You won the Davis Cup, the Whiteman Cup, and the men's singles at Forest Hills, didn't you? Uh... <laughs> you may have a good memory, but those are tennis terms. Oh, wrong racket. What are some of your titles? <laughs> What are some of your titles, Paul? I was fortunate enough to win the uh, National Professional Golf Championship in 1934 and 1938. That's pretty good for a little fellow like that, huh? Eh? All famous golfers had nicknames before. What's yours? Little Poison. Little Poison, huh? They call me Big Schlemiel, huh? <laughs> why, why do they call you Little Poison, uh, Paul? Well, perhaps it's because I have been the thorn in the side of some heavier adversaries. 
Very well put, Paul. Huh? <laughs> and uh, Lucia, you, uh, what kind of singing do you teach? Opera and classical and semi-classic. You mean they have to study to scream like that? Huh? <laughs> Tell me, Rigoletto, can you teach anyone to sing? I would say yes. Because I've never found anyone yet who could not learn if he had the correct technical work. You should have been out here about ten minutes ago. <laughs> You'd be licking your wounds now, Lucia. <laughs> All right, how would you teach me, Lucia? Boom, 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 that's Lucia. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Well, to begin with, uh, correct breathing. <laughs> Yes, uh, inhaling, inhaling. Uh, deeply, relaxation, so the air will keep coming. There you are. You pick that out, Lucia, and be sure Paul gets 50 of it, huh? Well, cadenza, are all singers alike, or is there a difference between them? Oh, certainly. What kind of voices do singers have? Well, of course, to begin with, our first classification is there are women's voices and men's voices. Well, uh, oh, well I didn't know that. I must tell this to this uh, <laughs> Suppose I wanted to get up a lady quartet. Could I find one who sings bass? No. The contralto is as low as a lady goes. You are not. We haven't been out with the same kind of lady. <laughs> now, Paul, let's talk about golf. How long do you have to be a pro before you can become an amateur? Oh, no, my mistake. That's tennis. I was thinking of... What is your favorite club? The Annandale Golf Club of Pasadena. What's your best score for 18 holes? On a regulation 18-hole championship course, 61 at the Forest Hill Field Club in Bloomfield, New Jersey. How about, uh, what does the average golfer go around with? I think 95 to 100. How about the girls? Don't some of the girls do better than that? Oh, good many of the girls go around and a great deal less. <laughs> Is your club open up in the morning? I remember the first time I played golf, I went around in 75. I didn't play at all in 76. I was busy at Valley Shore. How can I improve my score? I shoot around 94. That's for cheating. I think I'd advise you to take a few lessons from a confident instructor, do I've a little practicing, I've and a little lessons. playing. I've taken lessons. It's hopeless. <laughs> well, how could I learn to win without playing well? <laughs> you might, uh, you might resort to a little pencil pushing, or you might have a hole in your pocket, or you might have a handy toe in the rough, or you might use a hand mashing more frequently. How is it you know so much about those things? <laughs> Tell me about that pencil pushing again, huh? First of all, you have to forget to count over five. On any hole? Any hole. What about the uh, 540 at Hillcrest? Well, I think you could still forget to count over five on that. I do, but you know where I am? I'm in the first sand trap leading the team. <laughs> number of exciting moments as a professional golfer. Can you tell us about one of them, Paul? Well, as a tournament player, I've had many exciting experiences. Perhaps the most exciting is during the playing of the international four-ball matches in Miami, Florida, I was partnered by Horton Smith in this best ball event, and on arriving at the fourth tee, I dropped a high five-iron shot right on the top of a head of a gentleman sitting on a camp stool behind the green. He had just reached up to take his hat off to polish his head with his handkerchief when the ball hit on the top of his head and he dropped off of his seat like he'd been shot with a Winchester rifle. 
But on the next year, Horton and I incidentally won the first international four ball championship and we were paired again as partners. The next year, arriving at the ninth green with two or three thousand people down the left side of the ferry, hit, Smith hit a booming hook down the left side. Down goes a man. Who is it? Our friend of the camp. <laughs> The publicity on the international four ball matches the next year says that Dr. Johnson is in Miami to watch his perennial favorites, Runyon and Smith, in the international four ball matches, but he'll gallery in an armored suit. <laughs> You beat the other two couples and you get a chance at the $2,000 question. Now, I can't tell you how much the other couples won, but Fenneman's offstage remind our listeners. The Lady Barber and the Married Man are ahead with $200. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected women athletes as your category. Now, here's your first question. How much will you bet? $10. $10. $10. In what sport is Gussie Moran famous? Tennis. Tennis is right, huh? Remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. Now, how much of your $30 will you bet on your second question? $20. $20. And what sport is Florence Chadwick famous? It's a tough one. Take a shot. No, I'm sorry. It's swimming. She broke Gertrude Edley's record for the channel. They now have $10. They now have $10, he said in a low, funereal voice, sir. <laughs> Here's your third question. <laughs> how much of the 10 are you going to go for? Nine. No. no. <laughs> well, you're going to hang on the edge, huh, Paul? In what sport is Patty Blake famous? No. Golf is right, huh? Well, on the way to the hell, that's $19. All right, you got here's your last chance to be the other couple. How much of the 19? The work. You're going to shoot the work. All right. In what sport is Barbara Ann Scott famous? Ice skating. Ice skating is correct. <laughs> of $38. And that means the Lady Barber and the Married Man with $200 get the chance of the $2,000 question. And here's the Lady Barber and the Married Man all set for the $2,000 question. Good luck to you. Here we go uh, for $2,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. So think carefully, and please no help from the audience. Here it is. The longest battle of our Civil War was the Seven Days Battle. What city was the objective of this great struggle? Richmond? Richmond is right. So you win two thousand dollars. What are you gonna What are you gonna do with all that money? Help your brother-in-law. You're gonna help your brother-in-law. Why? Ill. Oh, he's ill. Well, that's a fine way to spend it. And you, Mabel? Come to the cancer fund. Come to the cancer fund. Well, those are worthy objectives. Yeah? Let's see. You won two thousand dollars plus uh, hundred dollars in the how much did they win? Two hundred. Two hundred in the quiz. Two hundred in the quiz and two thousand dollars cash and the secret word. I don't think this couple of things is possible. Well, you won twenty-two hundred dollars, two thousand two hundred dollars. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. You bet your life is a John Goodell production, transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is bread. B R E A D. Really? You bet your life. <laughs> Soto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! Is that fool still around? Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx! <laughs> Thank you. Well, here I am again with $2,500 for one of our couples tonight. A lot of money. George Fenneman, who's first to try for it? 
We invited some pediatricians to the show tonight, and just before we went on the air, we selected Dr. Alonzo Cant. His partner is a young mother from the audience, Mrs. Christine Garcia. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, kids, to You Bet Your Life. And if one of you says a secret word, he wins $100 immediately. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. A young mother and a pediatrician. Uh, wh- which one is the young mother? I am. You, you are? Congratulations, Mrs. Uh, Christine Garcia, huh? Yes. You know, uh, uh, you're named after a 10 cent cigar, did you know that? <laughs> yes, I am. Well, where are you from? I'll call you Christine, huh? Okay. I'm, uh... You call for... me Garcia, huh? All right. <laughs> Later I'm... on, I'll give you a message from Garcia. <laughs> Where are you from, Christine? Albuquerque, New Mexico. And Mr. Alonzo Stagg, uh, Cass, huh? <laughs> what, what's your hometown? Los Angeles. And Mr. Cass, how, how long have you two been married? Huh? I'm a pediatrician. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't care what your religion is, just as long as you're happy. Huh? <laughs> now then, how long have you two been married? Huh? She's not my wife. A fine time to desert her right after she has a child. <laughs> How old are you, Christine? Nineteen. Nin- Nineteen? Mm-hmm. Huh? Well, you're certainly well-preserved, huh? <laughs> you don't look a day over eighteen. <laughs> How long have you been a mother? Uh, my baby is eight months old. Uh, Mr. Uh, Cass, <laughs> uh, what did you say your vocation was? And don't tell me the last two weeks in August, huh? I'm a That's a very old joke, huh? <laughs> it's so old, I didn't even get a laugh, huh? <laughs> what is your vocation? And don't tell me the last two weeks in August, huh? <laughs> month is wrong. I'll try July. <laughs> You're a pediatrician, huh? That's right. Is that so? How long have you been a bicycle rider? <laughs> I don't ride bicycles. I take care of babies. Oh, you're a baby doctor, huh? Oh, I thought a baby doctor would be about three years old. Huh? <laughs> like a baby elephant, huh? <laughs> well, that shows you, huh? You don't mind if I call you a doctor, do you? Uh... Well, uh, uh, most... Uh... Doctors like to be called just Doctor or, or Al. Well, I couldn't call my Doctor Al. His name is Henry. Huh? <laughs> you want me to call you Doctor or uh, uh, Al or what? Well, you use your own judgment. That's perfectly all right. Okay. Well, uh, tell me, Josephine, how long... Uh... <laughs> you brought that on yourself, Doctor. <laughs> Do you have any little patients of your own at home? Yes, I have six children. Hmm. They're not patients. Not your patients. Huh? <laughs> Smart kids, they don't trust their old man. <laughs> why, why is that? Why aren't they your uh, victims, well, uh, patients? Well, yeah. usually it's not considered ethical to take care of your own family. In addition to that, it'd be kind of difficult collecting the bill, wouldn't it? <laughs> how, how old is your husband, uh, Mrs. Garcia? 23. Is he shaving yet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what sort of work does he do? He's an upholster. Uh, how did you meet him? I met him at a dance. My father introduced him to me. What do you mean, your father introduced you? Uh... Well, he knew him. Oh, he knew him? And, uh, and did you evince a desire to meet this man? Or just, uh... Oh, no. Did your father drag over everybody at a dance <laughs> and, and say, here's another specimen. Try this one. Huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> what, what is the baby's name, Christine? John Joseph. John Joseph? Mm-hmm. Uh, any uh, reason why you chose that name? Well, it's, John is my husband's first name, and Joseph is my father's name. He gets, uh, he gets an assist for dragging him over that dance floor. <laughs> how, how much did your baby weigh when it was born, Christine? Six pounds, eight ounces. And what does it weigh now? Twenty-two pounds. Gained a lot of weight, didn't he? Well, they're supposed to double their weight in six months. At that rate, time the kid is 21, he'd weigh about 2,300 pounds. <laughs> Doc, uh... Uh, I mean, Croker, is, uh, <laughs> is, is Christine uh, doing the right thing? Uh? Well, uh, the first job of a baby is to gain weight and uh, uh, keep its strength up. In some cases, that's the last job the bum ever has. Huh? <laughs> How much does your pride and joy eat in a day, Christine? Besides baby food, uh, four bottles. You eat four bottles a day? <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty hearty kid, you know. <laughs> Is, uh, when you bite them, isn't there danger of flying glass? <laughs> I suppose he just lies there on his back and blows martini bubbles. Huh? <laughs> what did you put in his bottle, Christine? Huh? Uh, his formula, about 160 calories. Mm-hmm. 
What uh, calorie? Is that any relation to cab calorie? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's something in food uh, to make the baby big and strong. You better stick to a plain diet for that kid, huh? <laughs> Every day, wholesome food like bottles and glasses. <laughs> now, Pablo and Pete, suppose you tell them... <laughs> Suppose you tell this little mother what a calorie is. Well, a calorie is the amount of heat that it takes to heat a cubic centimeter of water through one degree. Well, if your kid can swallow that, he has a cast iron stomach. <laughs> Doc, what kind of a pediatrician are you? Huh? Well, I belong to the Blue Shield. What's that? What's the Blue Shield? The Blue Shield's a, a national organization organized by the doctors. It's a voluntary medical insurance plan where the people pay a certain amount each month. Then they're taken by care of by any doctors they choose. Well, is it like in England? Can they get glasses and toupees and things like that? Well, I don't dispense glasses and toupees. I suppose they'd have to pay. Have you got an old toupee? You're not. Uh... <laughs> not yet. <clears throat> well, what do you do as a pediatrician? Well, I uh, take care of the babies right from birth and uh, watch the development and advise the mothers how to uh, feed their babies and uh, see that they're raised. I hope into being good citizens. Mm. Do the mother swallow all this hoopla? Huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> Tell me, Christine, does uh, your pediatrician do all this work on your baby? Well, so far he's given him a couple of shots. You mean he shot him? Huh? <laughs> well, we've all got to go sometime. I guess. Why'd he shoot him, in the head? No, in the arm. <laughs> I'm, I'm still getting those, huh? Well, I'm glad to hear that. He just winged them, in other words. Huh? <laughs> now, Doc, as long as you're here, would you mind if I steal some free advice? No, go ahead. I have a three-and-a-half-year-old daughter, and she loves candy. Should, should I give it to her? Why, of course. How much? Candy? Well, she can have all she wants, as a matter of fact. All she wants? Yes. Isn't it bad for the teeth? Or... No. Is that so? Well, I'm glad my kid can't hear this. Huh? <laughs> And she doesn't like to drink her orange juice in the morning. What, what should I do about that? Well, you could try drinking it yourself. <laughs> well, I, by the time I get to hers, it's pretty sloppy. Huh? <laughs> and during the night, she likes to get up out of bed every few hours. Uh, how can I make her sleep? Try spanking her. Every night, slugging her? I don't think it would last very long if you slugged her once or twice. I don't think I would either. <laughs> well, that's, that's uh, you're pretty tough with babies, huh? <laughs> Give them a lot of candy, snatch away their orange juice, and slug them, huh? <laughs> Can't wait till I get home with that baseball bat, huh? <laughs> well, in, in spite of my kidding, Doc, uh, I'm sure you pediatricians are contributing a great deal to the health of the community. Now, in just one minute, you're going to try for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question. Every DeSoto Plymouth dealer has an assignment that means service to you. A mission to deal with you fairly and squarely, whether it be for a new car, a used car, or a simple repair job. Friends, those few simple words stand for a whole way of doing business. A business policy, you might call it, by which more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers across the entire country have made a reputation which, frankly, is the envy of many other folks in the automotive business, or in any business for that matter. These dealers realize that it's good business sense to treat customers right, to make courtesy an important part of the day's work of all their employees, to tackle any job, no matter how small, with an honest desire to please you. Now, if that's the kind of place you like to do business with, drive in to any authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Now, let's see if a young mother and a pediatrician will get the chance at the $2,500. Send them and tell them the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected songs with beverages in the title. Is that right? Here's your first question. You have $20. How much are you going to try and talk right into the microphone? $10. What's the name of this song? Play, Jerry. Roll out the barrel. What is it? And they're on their way. They have 
$30, Groucho. Well, now you got $30. Remember, you're going for $2,500 tonight. How much of the 30 will you try? $20 this time. $20. Let's see if you can identify this one. P for two. P for two. They're climbing now. They have $50. All right, you have $50. How much of the 50 will you bet? 40 40 Give me the title of this song with a beverage in the title. Music, please. Cream in my Eat coffee. Cream in my coffee. You're the cream of my coffee at 70 cents a pound. Now, here's the... They have $90, $90. Bob, they wouldn't have written that song today. Is your last chance to beat the other couple. Uh, how much of the 90 are you going to try? 20 $20. All right. This song is by Hoagie Carmichael. It's got a beverage in the title. Okay. Oh, buttermilk sky. Oh, buttermilk sky. And they wind up with $110. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, don't sneak off. You might still be high for the night and get the chance at the $2,500 question. Groucho, the secret word is still bread. Perhaps our next couple will say it. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a shoemaker and a housewife. And here they are, Mr. Marvin Babb and Mrs. Harriet Mosley. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, folks, to You Bet Your Life. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mrs. Mosley, is that right? Right. Where are you from, Mrs. Mosley? Sioux City, Iowa, originally. Sioux City, huh? Mr. Babb, uh, who do you work for? For Joe Zinke. Are you married, Mr. Babb? Yes. Does your wife think you're a good shoemaker? Oh, naturally. Probably thinks you're a fine fellow to boot, too, huh? <laughs> Has she ever done that? She's tried a few times. Mm-hmm. Do you have any little hides at home that need tanning? <laughs> Get one. Get one, huh? How long have you been married, Mrs. Mosley? Almost 14 years. Well, you don't look at it. Thank you, like, sir. You look like a recent bride. I'm almost old enough to be your mother, I'll bet. <laughs> I, I would consider that very seriously. <laughs> Any time, Mr. Marks, you come out and join the brood. <laughs> well, if I have to be part of a brood, let's get it, huh? <laughs> I want to do my own brooding. Now, uh, <laughs> you, you have children? I'll yes, call sir. you Harriet, huh? Thank you. Yes, I have children. What are their ages? Twelve and eight and six and four. Bingo. Oh, I'm sorry. I, uh, <laughs> I thought you called my number. <laughs> How did you meet your husband, Harriet? Feet first. Feet first? Yes, sir. He was stuck in a transom. <laughs> was it your transom? No, sir. <laughs> Would you he mind clarifying to... that? Well, he was trying to get into his own hotel room the hard way, I guess. <laughs> he started through and the transom had closed on him and he couldn't get out. He couldn't get in. Are you sure that was his room? Uh, yes, sir, I am. Because he was making these strange noises. That's uh, the first thing that drew my attention to him. And, uh, well, it's not imagine... the customary position, I think. No. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly isn't. And he said, uh, well, I have a key in my pocket. That seemed awfully silly, but uh, I got the key out of his pocket. Just a moment, Harriet. Uh, just a moment. Uh. Why was he going in through the transom if he had a key in his pocket? <laughs> Mr. Marks, he's never told me. I honestly don't know. That's true. And he still... I went... have my own ideas, but... Uh... They're not your own ideas. They're mine, too. <laughs> <I think. laughs> now, uh, Shoemaker, I'll, I'll just call you Cobbler, huh? Uh, we don't like to be called that. That's Chicago. more of a butcher. Well, some of my shoes have been butchered up pretty well. <laughs> well what specifically do you do? Uh... I uh, repair shoes, put on new soles, new heels, make repairs in the uppers. You repair uppers? You mean <laughs> you mean you're also a dentist? <laughs> no, I just make shoes. Oh, now what's the? Uh... There used to be an old joke about a fellow patent leather shoes, He's leather on top, and his bare feet with patent on the ground. <laughs> That belonged to Moran and Mac, the two black crows. <laughs> and, and they can have it, I might add. Uh, uh, how, how'd you get to be a shoemaker? Did you study at Oxford? No. <laughs> That's a kind of a joke, you see. <laughs> Which shoes are hard? Do you ever sing Shoe Shoe Baby when you're uh, working on it? <laughs> no, I guess not. <laughs> Which shoes are harder to repair, men's or, or women's? No, women's shoes are much harder to repair. Why, why is it? Well, because of all the fantastic designs and styling. So why, why do they wear such fantastic styles? Uh, Harriet, uh, maybe you can answer that. Why do they wear such well, peculiar I suppose, styles? Uh, uh, that 
the men to notice their feet. Wouldn't they do better attracting attention if they walked around barefoot? (laughs) (laughs) Well, if you really want to stop traffic, try going without, uh, well, without looking carefully before you cross the street. (laughs) What do they put in cheap shoes that make them wear out? Well, they put a lot of belly leather in the soles and the insoles. What's belly leather? Well, (laughs) well, that's uh, the part of the hide that is the covering for the animal's belly. And then you put What's fake... the matter with that? Why, isn't that just as good as any other part? Well, that's nice for the cow, but it don't work very good in shoes. <laughs> <laughs> you mean they, ju- they just can't stomach that kind of leather? Right? <laughs> Suppose I brought some shoes into your shop and they were in pretty bad shape. Exactly. What would you do to them? They were really knocked around, beat up, and rip, rattle, and run down. Because I start... Put on a new welt, new heels, new heel bases. You do all really that, make huh? them, Really make them look like a new pair of shoes. Seems hardly worthwhile to go to all that trouble. I'm talking about horseshoes. <laughs> now, can you tell anything about a person just by looking at a pair of shoes? Yes. Well, uh, what can you tell? Give us an example. Well, you can tell whether he's a man or a woman. <laughs> Shoemaker, stick to your last. <laughs> How would you like it if I came down to your shop and tied all the shoelaces together? <laughs> well, I must say I learned a lot about shoe repairing here tonight. Now, you're going to play your bet your life for $2,500. You beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the big question later. I can't tell you how much the first couple won, but Fenneman is off stage to remind our listeners. The pediatrician and the young mother earned $110. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected leaders in our government as your category. Now, here's your first question. You have $20. How much are you going to try? Ten. Who is vice president of the United States? Barkley. Alvin Barkley is right. We're on the way with $30, Groucho. Remember, you're going for $2,500 tonight. How much of the 30 will you try? Twenty. Who is the chief justice of the United States? Douglas? No, I'm sorry. It's, it's Fred Vinson. Oh, now they have ten dollars. Well, now you've got ten dollars. Here's your third question. How much of the ten will you try? Bet the ten. <laughs> Who is the senior senator from Ohio? His father was a president. Taft. Senator Taft is correct. <laughs> and they're on their way again. They have twenty dollars. Now you've got twenty. Here's your last chance to be the other couples. How much of the twenty will you bet? Twenty. Who is the secretary of state? Dean Atchison. Dean Atchison is correct. And they wind up with forty dollars. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, in a moment, we'll know who's going to earn the chance at the $2,500 question. George, who's ahead so far? The pediatrician and the young mother are leading with $110. And the secret word is still bread. We invited a number of models to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience chose Dorothy Green. Her partner is Mr. M.A.K. Feldsberg, an artist. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers, including that whistle. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 instantly. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Miss Dorothy uh, Green, is that right? That's correct. You're, you're the model, and a very, very lovely one, too, huh? Are, are you married? Yes, I am. Yes. <laughs> Let's quit right here, huh? Do <laughs> you have any uh, little new models at home? Well, they're sort of new. I have three. You have three? Yes, I do. How old are they? I have one six, one five, and one two. Well, you don't look it. Well, thank you. <laughs> Must have got married on your bar mitzvah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Mr. M. A. K. Felsberg, is, is that right? Yes. Uh, where are you from, uh, Mac? New York originally. Call you Mac, huh? Yes, definitely. Uh, where are you from? New York originally. New York, huh? You're you're the artist, huh? That's right. You look a little drawn. I didn't. Uh... <laughs> I didn't recognize the name. What comic strip do you draw, Mr. I don't draw comic strips. Well, keep trying. You'll get there, right? Are you married, Mac? Yes. How, how did you meet your wife? At Carnegie Hall, we happened to have been sitting together. Did you go in there together? Or just, uh, no. Just yeah. music lovers, huh? Yes. You started out as music lovers, That's is that it? That's right. And you didn't wind up that way, though. No, I... Carry on with my painting. <laughs> I hope that's the only carrying on you did, Mr. <laughs> Definitely. 
What were they playing the night you were at Carnegie Hall? Do you remember? Oh, uh, Brown Brandenburg Concerto Number Two. Oh. I forget it's that. It's Bach, you know. It's not Brown. Uh, Bach, yeah. Yes. Just want you to know that I'm no schmo, you know. No. <laughs> Many a glass of Bach beer I've drunk in my time. <laughs> Have you ever painted a portrait of your wife, uh, Mr. Feldsberg? Yes, as a matter of fact. Where do you hang her? Huh? <laughs> Where did you hang her? In the living room over the fireplace. <laughs> Isn't it a little warm there? Huh? I'm talking about the painting. <laughs> on this program, we're never sure, Mr. Feldsberg. Do <laughs> you have many paintings on exhibition and galleries? Yes, I have some... Uh... All the way across the country, Boston, New York, Pittsburgh, and a few others. Any and local people? Or yes, I sold, people? recently I sold a painting, quite a large painting, to Frank Sinatra. To Sinatra? Yes. Well, who carried it home for him? <laughs> that was probably a frame-up, huh? <laughs> How can you tell if someone has artistic talent? Well, I don't, prim- I don't believe in the talent. There is no such thing as There is no such thing as? No. This will be a great blow to Bing Crosby, you know. (laughs) Particularly since his son is now pushing him off the (laughs) airwaves. Could I line to paint a picture of uh, Dorothy uh, Green here? I think so, with his proper supervision. (laughs) Well, if I have to have supervision, I'm not interested. Now, what kind of a model are you, outside of being a pretty fair-looking dish, uh, Dorothy? Uh, are you the new uh, 1950 model to soda that's all new from bumper to bumper? Well, I wouldn't say that, no. I'm a photographic and uh, showroom model. And where do you do your modeling? Uh, I work through Cal and Leonetti's agency in Hollywood. House of Charm, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. May I ask how old you are, Dorothy? Yes, I'm 26. You're a fairly recent model, aren't you? Huh? <laughs> what, what size are you? What size am I? I'm a perfect size 12. I don't care what size you are. You're just perfect. <laughs> what do you say is the most difficult part about modeling? Well, I would say the fact that we usually work a season ahead. You uh, wind up in a nice stuffy hot showroom modeling fur coats in the middle of the summer and you usually wind up out on the beach in the pouring rain modeling bathing suits in January or something. You wear a bathing suit in the winter? Yes, I have, many times. I can't see what keeps you warm. You're not supposed to. <laughs> well, I can dream, can I? <laughs> yes. Now, what kind of models do you prefer to work with, Mr. Felsberg? Well, I paint the sea, landscapes and seascapes. Landscapes. Now, well, <laughs> you stick to your work and I'll stick to mine. <laughs> Now, Mr. Felsberg, I want you to disregard anything I've said about you. Your professional reputation is safe in spite of me. Now, you're going to play the DeSoto Plymouth game. You bet your life. If you beat our other two couples, you'll get a crack at the $2,500 question. I can't tell you how much they won, but George is off stage to remind our listeners. The pediatrician and the young mother are still ahead with $110. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected maiden names of movie stars as your category. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you try? All right, we'll try ten. What is Mrs. Humphrey Bogart's maiden name? Lauren Bacall. Lauren Bacall, Bacall, Bacall is correct. And they're off to a good start with $30, Groucho. How much of the 30 are you going to try? Remember, you're going for $2,500. That's the big one now. Right, right. Twenty. Twenty. What is Mrs. Tyrone Powers' maiden name? Linda Christian. Linda Christian is correct. Yes. They're climbing now. They have $50. Now you have $50. Here's your third question. How much will you bet of the 50 Twenty-five. 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 Here we go. What is Mrs. Walter Wange's maiden name? Joan Bennett. Joan Bennett is right. They're really on their way. They have $75. Now you got 75 and here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 75 will you risk? Do we try 60? Right. Yes. 60. 60. What is Mrs. Desi Arnaz's maiden name? Lucille Ball. Lucille Ball! And they wind up with a grand total of $135. And that means that they get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question. If you own a car, it's important to you to get expert service at a fair price. You don't have to be told that. 
But I do want to tell you that it pays to go to an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer, whether it's an emergency or a routine checkup. For there, you get expert, courteous service at the lowest possible cost. In fact, that's a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's everyday way of doing business. Now, they're able to accomplish this because they have highly skilled mechanics in their shop. And these experts work with special factory-designed and approved tools. From the records they keep on your car, they're able to tell you, for example, when your engine is ready for a tune-up or new lubrication. They'll tell you when your tires should be rotated to add thousands of miles to their life. So, for the best from your car, drive in where you get the best service. At the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here's the model and the artist, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question, Groucho. Well, you can you won't have to paint anything for a long time if you guess this, Mr. Felsberg. All right, here we go for $2,500. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully, and please, no help from the audience. Here it is. As you know, members of the President's Cabinet are appointed. The portfolio of one of these, however, expires every four years. Which Cabinet member's term expires every four years? Okay, what's the answer you two have decided upon? Uh, I'm sorry. It's the Postmaster General. Yeah. Oh. So that means the big question next week will be worth $3,000. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $135 in the quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You'll Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week the big question will be worth $3,000. Well, it's almost time for Bing Crosby, so good night, folks. And remember... Just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here's a tip from the National Safety Council. Just take it slow on ice or snow. This is George Fenneman signing off with more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is sugar. S-U-G-A-R. Rally. You bet your life. The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Never heard of him. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx! <laughs> Thank you. Well, here I am again with $3,000 for one of our couples tonight. George Fanneman, who's first? We invited some milkmen and some brewmasters to the show tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected milkman Howard Cram. His partner is brewer John White. Gentlemen, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, gents, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if one of you says the secret word at any time, he wins $100 in cash. It's a common what? word, something you use every day. A milkman and a brewmaster, eh? A milkman, uh, How Howard Cram, is that right? Where, where are you from, Howard? Uh, Park City, Montana. Just a hop, skip, and a jump from Yellowstone National Park. Well, is that the only way you can go? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Mr. Weiss, uh, you're the brewmaster, huh? That's right. Oh, uh, where, where are you from? 
Omaha, Nebraska. Why aren't you from Milwaukee? <laughs> Born in Omaha. Did you know then you were going to be in the beer business? <laughs> Almost. Almost? Milkman, uh, you haven't turned sour yet, have you? Uh, no, sir. <laughs> who, do, who do you work for? Uh, Eight-Or Milk Farms. Mm-hmm. And the beer bust, who do you work for? Huh? Meyer Brewing Company. Who with the Meyer Brewing Company? Meyer Brewing Company. How, how, much, uh, how much beer do you brew in a day? Oh, about 900 barrels. Hmm. And Milkman, uh, how much milk do you deliver in a day? Oh, I deliver around uh, 550 quarts a day. You deliver 550 quarts of milk a day? Yes. I don't believe it. Huh? <laughs> Let me see you open your big brown eyes and say, Ma! <laughs> now, as a milkman, has anything embarrassing ever happened to you, Mr. Cram? Well, yes, yeah, several things. Uh, one, for instance, uh, my wife and I was uh, walking down the street uh, the other day, and I happened to see one of my customers on the street. And uh, I said, uh, how do you do, Mrs. Jones? And she looks at me and didn't even recognize me. And I was uh, dressed just like I am now. And I said, uh, well, don't you recognize me, Mrs. Jones? I'm your milkman. She says, oh, uh, I didn't know you with your clothes on. <laughs> This must have made your wife very happy. <laughs> How about you, beer bottle? Have you ever had any uh, unusual experience, embarrassing? Yes, I remember one incident uh, when I served my apprenticeship in the brewery. Uh, this plank was placed across the top of this tank here, and uh, I fell off the plank into this tank of beer. <laughs> and, uh, well, would you have stayed in there if there were pretzels in there? <laughs> I think so. Have you ever been totally dry, Mr. White? <laughs> you, you know how to milk a cow, uh, Mr. Cram? Oh, it's easy. There's nothing to it. Well, it's easy to lay an egg, but I bet you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think the least you two could do is shake hands. <laughs> I now pronounce you more than milk, huh? <laughs> In just one minute, you're going to have a chance to make $3,000. For many reasons, the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America believe that their way of doing business has won them many new customers, folks who will continue to be their customers. That's because these dealers have done their utmost to treat you fairly and squarely. Whether it be for a new car, a used car, or a simple repair job, they've tried to be courteous all along. Well, you, the car owners of America, seem to have appreciated this kind of organization and the attitude it had toward you. So today, in every city and every state, thousands of smart car owners make sure they stop at the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say of a milkman and a brewmaster will be the ones who get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth three thousand dollar question. Fenneman, explain the rules. Each of our three couples has twenty dollars. They bet as much of that twenty as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets the chance at the three thousand dollar question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's going on out here. You select the famous friends and companions as your category. Is that right? All right. Now you have twenty dollars. How much are you going to bet? Ten. Ten dollars. Here's your first question. You bet ten dollars. What was the name of Robinson Crusoe's faithful servant? Friday. Friday is right, huh? <laughs> They're on their way with $30, Groucho. Remember, you're going for $3,000 tonight. How much of the 30 will you try? 20 What was the name of John Alden's good friend? <laughs> so quiet you can hear a contestant <laughs> drop. <huh? laughs> well, I'm sorry. It was Miles Standish. They now have ten dollars. All right. Here's your third question. How much of the ten are you going to try? Five. Five dollars. Who was Tom Sawyer's best friend? Huckleberry Finn. Huckleberry Finn yeah. is right. <laughs> on the way again, they have fifteen dollars. Right, now you got fifteen. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the fifteen? Fifteen. Shoot the works. Who was Sherlock Holmes's faithful friend? Oh, Doctor. Yeah. Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> 
Dr. Something. Well, yes, that's right. It was Dr. You know, Watson the Needle. Oh, Dr. Dr. Well, here's one more chance to make some money. If you get this one right, I'll hand over $10 in cash. And please, no coaching. Who is buried in Grant's tomb? <laughs> Grant. General Grant is right. Thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, stick around. Who knows? You may be the ones who get the chance at the $3,000 question. Groucho, the secret word is still sugar. Perhaps our next couple will say it. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected an interior decorator, Mr. Doug Haynes, and a housewife, Mrs. Audrey Forsythe. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to You Bet Your Life. And if one of you says the DeSoto Plymouth secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you use every day. Uh, Audrey Forsythe? Where are you from? Oh, Pine Bluff, Arkansas. You're a very pretty housewife. Too, Thank right? you. Your husband as pretty as you are? Uh, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> is he much bigger than you are? Yes, he is. Well, let's forget it, huh? <laughs> what does your husband do, Audrey? Uh, he's in the Army. He's a tech sergeant. A tax sergeant? Yes, yeah, What does he do, sit on tax? <laughs> <laughs> now, what is a tax sergeant? I'm, I haven't been... Well, well, I don't know. I've it's only just... been through five wars, so I don't know. <laughs> I didn't say I was in him. I was just through him. <laughs> well, it's the grade below a, a master is all I know. And do you see him very often? Oh, he's going overseas. When? Uh, around the 28th, I suppose. Mr. Douglas Haynes, you're the uh, interior decorator, huh? No, Hal Haynes, sir. Oh, Hal, Hal Haynes, huh? Where are you from, Hal? I'm from Auckland, New Zealand. Are you, are you married? Yes, sir. Is your wife in the Army? Huh? No, she's not in the Army. <laughs> Uh, how did you meet your wife, Hal? Well, she was touring in New Zealand with her father, who's Dante the Magician. And um, I went to a dance, and uh, I met her and uh, looked at her and said, Can you see out of those beautiful eyes? And she said yes, and two weeks later we were married. <laughs> is, uh, is that the customary approach in New Zealand? <laughs> I don't know, sir. It's the only one I've ever approached. Well, I think you did it charmingly, huh? How, how did you meet your husband, Mrs. Forsyth? I was working at my brother and sister-in-law's cafe during the summer. Well, very, where was this? In Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Oh. And my brother-in-law is a very ticklish person. I mean, he's just ticklish all over. And... Uh... <laughs> what? What? <laughs> You say uh, he's ticklish all over? Well, you mean all over Arkansas? <laughs> you, you, you'll have to explain that a little clearer, huh? Not too clear now, huh? And uh, this morning, uh, I came bursting in this cafe and I noticed this man uh, bending over the drink case. So I ran up to him and I jabbed him in his ribs and this fella fell practically in the, in the drink case. His hair was wet, and so I started laughing, naturally. And uh, when I laugh, I close my eyes, and so Let's I... see, will you laugh? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so when I looked up, you I... You say he's leaving the 28th? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, where was I now? Yeah. <laughs> you had your betrothed in a water case or something. <laughs> so when I, I finally stopped laughing, I looked up, and... Hissed a, um, a very angry man. I said I was sorry that I thought he was my brother-in-law. And then we were married oh, a couple of months later. Oh. Was he dry by that time? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was quite dry. Where do you do your decorating, Mr. Haynes? I work for W&J Sloan's in Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. Well, how much would you charge to decorate, let's say, fix up the inside of the average five-room house? Oh, about four to five thousand dollars. Now, I don't mean to build a house. I mean... Uh, <laughs> just climb down out of that chandelier up there. Right? <laughs> I mean, how little could you do it for? Well, we could do it for as little as, uh, well, say, 500 or or $1,000. But it really? uh, wouldn't suit a man in your position, Mr. Mark. <laughs> My customary position is horizontal, would that mean? <laughs> Now, to be a successful decorator, what do you regard as the most important requirement? Well, you have to know a uh, proper balance of a room and... Uh, proper balance in the bank? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the 
Look at him grin when I said bank. Huh? <laughs> what else? The uh, layout of the room. I mean, you should have it in conversational groupings. Conversational I mean... groupings? You mean the furniture sits around and talks to each other? <laughs> Chair. One chair says to the other, he says, my, your legs are crooked tonight. <laughs> you ought to wear a longer valance. <laughs> says, well, my valance in the bank is so bad, I can't afford it. <laughs> no groaning, please, huh? <laughs> uh, Mrs. Uh, Forsythe, has your husband gone yet? Uh... <laughs> Tell me, have you learned anything about interior decorating? It sounds expensive. <laughs> Mr. Haynes, would you care to defend yourself? Well, as a matter of fact, a good decorator can save money. Well, at your prices, I'm not surprised. Huh? <laughs> How much did you save last year? Huh? <laughs> How do you generally decide what color scheme to use in a house? Hell? Well, uh, if it's a cold room, you use warm colors. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be better to put in a gas heater? <laughs> this is besides, uh, Forsythe, uh, if this isn't too uh, impudent, what color is your, is your uh, living room? It's pink. It's pink. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How about it, uh, Mr. Haynes? Is the living room warm? Oh, yes. <laughs> How do you know her living room is warm? Maybe she's wearing long underwear. <laughs> Well, tell us more about colors. It, it, it's fascinating. For example, uh, what's a good color for the bedroom? Oh, well, I would use um, pastel shades. Uh, uh-huh. Loud colors have a tendency, you know, to well, keep you awake. Mrs. Forsythe, what color is your bedroom? <laughs> it's a sort of an orange red. Sounds noisy. How do you sleep? <laughs> I turn the light out and it, the colors are... <laughs> You say you turn the light out? Yes. Doesn't that keep your husband in the dark? <laughs> now, you're going to have a chance to make $3,000. You run your 20 bucks into more than the other couples, and you get a crack at the big question. I can't tell you how much they won, but George Fenneman is off stage to remind our listeners. The milkman and the brewmaster lost all their money, so this couple has a clear field. Here we go. You have $20. How much are you going to risk? Ten. You selected... Uh, Large, uh, largest cities of the United States is your category. Is that right? Yes. yes. Now, you're going to bet $10. What is the largest city in the state of Ohio? Akron. Do you agree with that? Toledo. I- I- I'm sorry. It's Cleveland. <laughs> they now have $10, Groucho. Well, that's too bad. Well, you've got $10. Remember, you're going for $3,000. That's the big prize, anyhow. Now, how much of the $10 would you try? Five. Right. What is the largest city in the state of Michigan? Detroit. Detroit is correct. Well, on the way now, they have $15. Now you have $15. Now how much of the 15 are you going to try? Ten. What is the largest city in the state of Massachusetts? Boston. Boston is correct. They're still climbing. They have $25. Now you've got $25, and here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 25 are you going to risk? Uh, 25 Shoot the works. What is the largest city in the state of Missouri? Uh, St. Louis. St. Louis is correct. And they wind up with $50. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, in just a moment, our last couple will come up to bat, and then we'll all get the chance at the $3,000. Gentlemen, who's ahead so far? The interior decorator and the housewife are leading with their $50. And the secret word is still sugar. Perhaps the next couple will say it. In honor of Valentine's Day, we invited some people whose occupations are in keeping with the season. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mr. Jack Thorpe, a greeting card writer, and his partner is Miss Frankie Brown, a wedding director. And here they are, folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, children, to You Bet Your Life. And if one of you says that a soda Plymouth secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you use every day. A greeting card writer and uh, a wedding director. Mr. Uh, Thorpe, huh? You're the greeting card writer? That's correct. Mm-hmm. Well, greetings. Where are you from? Eh? <laughs> Los Angeles. Frankie Brown? That's, that's an odd name for a girl, isn't it? My name's really Francis. Oh, well, there's a new movie out called Francis, you know. Mm-hmm. Were you the star of that picture? Not that I know of. It's a good thing. Francis is a mule in this picture. 
<laughs> Where are you from, Frankie? I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. Do you, do you have a husband, uh, Frankie? No, I don't. Oh. You have nice teeth, uh, Frankie. Thank you. Do, you. do you plan to remain an old maid, uh, Frankie? <laughs> I'm not an old maid. I'm only 22. How old are you, uh, Jack? 25. Mm-hmm. Are, you, are you married? No, I'm not. <laughs> Well, let's find out something about you, too. <laughs> Frankie Gal, where do you direct your weddings? At Hotel Last Frontier in Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> how many marriages have you engaged in? Then? About 1,500. And how many engagements have you married in? <laughs> what are your duties as a, as a wedding director? Well, I arrange for the uh, organist, send notices to their hometown paper, contact the minister, and uh, arrange flowers. You sure you're not a funeral director? <laughs> no, I'm a wedding director. It's a pretty mortuary description, you know. <laughs> You're a wedding director, huh? Well, there isn't too much difference, huh? <laughs> Only thing is, at a wedding, you can smell your own flowers. You know? <laughs> now, tell me about the greeting card business, Mr. Thorpe. Uh, who do you work for? Well, I do work for a Colonial Greeting Card... Uh, Buzzer Cardoza, and several others. Yeah, well, what are your duties as a greeting card writer? Oh, I write verses for greeting cards. <laughs> you mean somebody writes those things, huh? <laughs> How do you know what to write? <clears throat> well, the simplest thing is the best. The more you say and the less you mean, the better. It's something like the congressional record, huh? <laughs> well, uh, can anybody be a greeting card writer? No, it takes a special talent. You have to be general, not too specific. For example, if I say uh, to my black-eyed sweetheart, a fellow couldn't send that to a blue-eyed girl. <laughs> you could if he gave her two shiners the night before. <laughs> Tell me, Shakespeare, what are the, uh, <laughs> what, uh, what specifically are the occasions for which you provide this deathless prose? Huh? Well, we have greeting cards for all occasions, uh, birthdays, valentines, congratulations for starting a new business. Congratulations for starting a new business? That's right. And suppose he goes Mahola, what happens then? <laughs> suppose I'll, he goes bankrupt. I'll pick up a new verse. <laughs> What do you do? Do you say the voice is yet to come? <laughs> Suppose you were in love with Frankie here, Jack, uh, and you wanted to send her a beautiful Valentine poem. Uh, what would you say on it? Go ahead, whip one out. Huh? Oh, I couldn't whip one right out. I'd have to think about it. Oh, well, how long? Huh? Well, would it take me a couple of days? <laughs> By that time, she's married to some desert right up in Las Vegas. <laughs> you know those desert rats? They trap them with cheesecake up there. Huh? <laughs> don't you carry? Don't you carry any of your epics around with you? Oh, I always carry cards with me. Well, well, read it. Read this one. Huh? <laughs> Hi there, Grandma, darling. <laughs> Frankie, Frankie, you certainly got old quick, huh? <laughs> well, Jackie boy, that was pretty old-fashioned. Haven't you got anything more streamlined? Yes, I have a comic valentine here. Oh, you have, huh? It has a picture of a garter and a stocking on it. As the stocking said to the garter, Hook up with me, pal. I ain't been snagged yet. <laughs> I'll bet that'd be a wow in Las Vegas, huh? <laughs> Frankie, while you're swooning from all this sentiment here, let's some- talk some more about your job. For instance, uh, where do the people come from who get married in your chapel? Well, they come from all over the world. Well, why? Can't they get married in uh, <laughs> Yugoslavia or Spain? No. Or... 
Our chapel's... Panama Canal? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't cost as much as having a large wedding in, in your hometown. And then another thing, nobody knows you're there, too. Huh? <laughs> well, how much do you charge for this grand larceny? <laughs> We have two plans. One is $25. $25? Mm-hmm. The other what do you 15. get for the 25 Well, $25, you get the minister of your choice and an organist to play whatever songs you'd like, witnesses if you need them. No bride? <laughs> what do I get for 15 bucks? I'm probably not even there for that. <laughs> what do I get for $15? Well, for 15 you get the same things as you do for the $25, except that you get a live organist. For 15? <laughs> for 15, you get a live organist? Why do you get a dead one for 25? <laughs> Frankie? Frankie, I'll take the one with the dead organist. <laughs> the one for me. It's ten, do- it's ten dollars more, but it's worth it, huh? <laughs> now, Frankie, what's the largest number of splice jobs you've racked up in a single day, huh? Uh, one Valentine's Day, we had 27 weddings. And th- is that what killed the organist? <laughs> <laughs> What are, what are your working hours on a job like that, huh? Well, I work from 9 to 5, and I'm on call 24 hours a day. Oh. <laughs> well, you're sort of like a fireman, huh? You yes. slide down a brass pole with a box of rice in one hand and a, and a dead organist in the other. Huh? <laughs> Well, now that you two are practically engaged, let's see if you'll get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $3,000 question. (laughs) Beat our other two couples, and you'll get a crack at the $3,000 question. I can't tell you how much they won, but George is off stage to remind our listeners. The interior decorator and the housewife are ahead with $50. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected colleges as your category. All right, you have $20. How much are you going to try? Well, we'll start with 10 What college is located at Palo Alto? Stanford. Stanford is right. <laughs> and we're off to a fine start with $30. All right, you got $30. Remember, you're going for $3,000 tonight. How much of the 30 will you bet? 25 25 What college is located at Ann Arbor? Michigan. Michigan. University of Michigan. <laughs> They're climbing now. They have $55. You got 55 Here's your third question. How much of the 55 are you going to go for? 50 What college is located at New Haven? Yale. Yale is right. <laughs> They're really on their way now. They have $105. Now you've got $105. Uh, it's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 105 are you going to go for? 100 What do you say, Keith? 100 <laughs> What college is, uh, is at Laramie? L-A-R-A-M-I-E. University of Wyoming. University of Wyoming. <laughs> and they wind up with $205. And that means that they get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $3,000 question. We're a nation of car owners in this country, and many of us know the inside of our family car as well as the back of our hands. Others don't care about what goes on inside our car, just so long as it's driving smoothly and economically. But whichever case fits you, when you drive your car into a shop for a checkup or some kind of repair job, you do like to know what is going to be done. You like to know why, and of course, how much it will cost. Now, here's one big reason why you'll appreciate the kind of service you get at a DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. The men who work on your car at a DeSoto Plymouth Dealers are service experts. They've had special training, constant training. They've special tools and equipment to work with that you won't find just anywhere. And on top of all these advantages, you'll find they have a courteous interest in explaining to you what will be done to your car, why it's going to be done. And you'll also get an estimate of what the job will cost. 
That's fair, isn't it? Well, fairness is one of the aims of the folks you'll meet at the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here's the greeting card writer and the wedding director, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $3,000 question, Groucho. All right, here we go to $3,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on one single answer between you, so think carefully, and please, no help in the audience. Here it is. The first capital of our country was New York. For $3,000, where was the second capital? All right, what's the answer you two have decided upon? Annapolis. No, I am. I'm sorry. It's Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. <laughs> so that means the big question next week will be worth $3,500. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $205 in the quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both of you, huh? You Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week, the big question will be worth... $3,500. $3,500. Well, it's almost time for Bing Crosby, so good night, folks. And remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here's a tip from the National Safety Council. Look out for the driver who doesn't look out for you. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Gentlemen, the secret word tonight is table. T A B L E. Rather. You bet your life. The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only. That Feniman's a nice kid. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx. <laughs> Here I am again with three thousand five hundred dollars for one of our couples tonight. George Feniman, who's first to try and take away all his money? We invited some high school students to the show tonight, and just before we went on the air, we selected Myrno Elliott. And Melvin Knorr. And here they are, folks. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. High school students, eh? Well, it's nice to have you here. Uh, Melvin uh, Knorr, is that right? Melvin. Melvin. Uh, where are you from, Mel? Uh, Eagle Rock High School. Where? Eagle Rock High School. Eagle Rock, huh? Oh. And before that, uh, where are you from? Well, I was born two blocks north of the Warner Brothers studio in North Hollywood. Is that with sound or without? Huh? <laughs> and uh, where are you employed? Uh, I don't work. I'll keep you secret, but answer my question. <laughs> where, where are you employed? Huh? I don't work. I go to high school. You're, you're right the first time. You don't work. <laughs> Mino uh, Elliot, uh, is that you? Mino? That's right. That's kind of an odd name for a girl, isn't it? Mino? 
Well, uh, mm-hmm. I had a little cousin who was three years old, and he couldn't say my given name, which is really Muriel, and he came out with Murno, and we liked it so well it just stuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to this kid that uh, christened you, huh? <laughs> oh, he's still a nice little boy. <laughs> boopity boopity boop. <laughs> That wasn't very nice of me to do that, my know, but you, you sounded so young, and, uh, uh, well, I just couldn't resist it, that's all. <laughs> what, what school do you attend, my know? I just graduated from Van Nuys High School. Oh. Well, congratulations. <laughs> now that you gradu- graduated from school, what are, you, what are your plans? Are you going to look for a job? I, I have a job, keeping house for my husband. Your husband? You mean you just graduated from high school and you've already got a husband? Uh, did he come with a diploma? <laughs> For almost 19 years. You had a husband for 19 years? What did you do? Get married when you were three years old? <laughs> no, I was 14. Well, you married late in life, didn't you? <laughs> You've been married 19 years and you were 14. That uh, comes to around, let's see, swine, 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 swine. <laughs> Thirty-three years old you are? Uh, now, how old are you, 26? <laughs> I'm 33. It sounds horrible, but it doesn't feel bad. <laughs> you certainly don't look bad, huh? <laughs> You're 33 years old, you've got a husband, and you just graduated from, from, from high school? Well, I was sort of detained a little, you know. When I ran away and got married, I didn't really think I'd ever get to finish, although I always wanted to. And You see, uh, my daughter, Aloha, was going to the school, too. And we, <laughs> my daughter, Aloha, was in the school with me, and everybody thought we were sisters, and we were listed in the records that way, so it wouldn't discombobulate the teachers that the kids either one, you know. So they wouldn't did. watch it, you <laughs> I'd like to add that to my vocabulary. Discombobulate, that's... <laughs> discombobulate, huh? Well, what do you look under? Discomboob or... Uh... <laughs> Did any of the high school boys try to make dates with you? Foolish question. (laughs) A few times. A few times. How about the teachers? (laughs) Just the students, huh? That's right. And what'd you tell them? Well, this one boy used to hide around the staircases. He kept getting so persistent. So I got him in the corner and I told him that Aloha was my daughter instead of my sister to cool him off. <laughs> did, did that cool him off? I did. Wouldn't have cooled me off. Huh? <laughs> well, who signed your report card when you, your husband? Huh? Oh, I had a system. You see, I was listed at school as Myrna Elliott. So when I took the card to him, I'd sign the cards as Mrs. H.W. Elliott, and then it looked all right. <laughs> what kind of grades did you get, uh, Mino? Well, I was very fortunate. I was able to get all A's for all three semesters I was there. Oh, that's wonderful. Right? <laughs> what grade is your daughter in? Uh... Well, she's just a year behind me in school. She's just a year behind you? <laughs> and is her daughter only a year behind that? <laughs> Now, uh, uh, Mel, you're still here, aren't you, Mel? <laughs> you know, you could have graduated while I was talking to you. <laughs> well, where do you, where do you work, uh, Melvin? I go to high school. You're still in that school, huh? <laughs> well, uh, do, do you hold any class offices like, uh, treasurer? Well, I was a basketball manager. Basketball? I've always wondered about that. Why did... Why don't they have a bottom in that basket so the ball doesn't keep dropping out all the time? <laughs> Tell me, do they still have six players on the side? <laughs> That's girls basketball. <laughs> I thought I was on the wrong team. And I... 
Your basketball manager you were? Uh, how, how much is your salary? I don't get a salary. What'd they do? Pay you off in dribbles? <laughs> do as a basketball manager? Well, I uh, keep score for most of the games, uh, time the games, clean the basketballs, and clean the gym floors. Mm-hmm. You have a pretty important job there, huh? <laughs> That's like a vice president in an advertising agency. <laughs> now, what kind of work do you do? <laughs> I go to high school. <laughs> Still going to school, eh? <laughs> You better look out. You'll be 33, too, before you graduate. <laughs> well, it's been enlightening having you two here. And, Mino, may I say you're a remarkable woman. And if you play your cards right, pretty soon you'll be the prettiest grandmother in Van Nuys High School. <laughs> now, in just one minute, you're going to give you get your chance to try for the DeSoto Plymouth $3,500 question. The Groucho Marx Program, friends, is being brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And their reason for presenting this program is to tell you something about themselves, to extend a cordial invitation to you to come in and get acquainted with them. For they're sure, once you've paid them that first visit, you'll be back whenever you need anything pertaining to cars. The reason they're so certain about this is that they, and by they, I mean everyone in a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's place of business are out to see that you are satisfied. No matter what make of car you drive, no matter what year it is, the folks at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers will do their utmost to treat you fairly and squarely. That's their creed. That's your best reason for driving in wherever you see the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Let's see if two high school pupils will get the chance at the $3,500. Fenneman, tell them the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that $20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $3,500 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Now, let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected songs of the 20s as your category. Is that right? Now, you have $20. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you bet? And talk right up into the microphone. Ten. Ten. This song was first popular in 1925. What's the name of it? What's five the end? What's the end? Blue. That's right, five yeah. foot two. <laughs> well, they're on their way. They have thirty dollars now, Gosh, oh. All right, now you got thirty dollars. Remember, you're going for three thousand five hundred dollars tonight. How much of the thirty will you bet? Twenty. All right, give me the title of this song. Play, Jerry. When the red red robin comes to Obama. When the red red robin came to Obama. They're climbing now. They have fifty dollars. All right, you got fifty bucks. Here's your third question. How much of the fifty are you going to try? Forty. Forty dollars. <laughs> Let's see if you can identify this one. Okay, Jerry. I'm sitting on top of the world. I'm sitting on top of the world. They now have ninety dollars. All right, you got ninety dollars. Here's your last chance to be the other couples. How much of the ninety? Eighty. Eighty dollars. What is the name of this song? $170. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now stick around. Who knows? You may be the ones who get the chance at the $3,500 question. Groucho, the secret word is still table. Perhaps the next couple will say it. We invited some deputy district attorneys. <laughs> <laughs> deputy district turnips, did you say? <laughs> Why, that's a vegetable. That man doesn't look like a vegetable to me. <laughs> I was trying to say that we invited some deputy district attorneys. Well, why don't you say that, Fenneman, huh? <laughs> to the show tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mr. Bill Ritzy, and his partner is a housewife, Mrs. Lillian Watkins. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Hello? Welcome, welcome to your bet your life. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you find around the house. A district attorney and a housewife, eh? Practically the same thing. 
Now, D.A., uh, are, you, are you married? Answer yes or no. Yes. How'd you meet your wife? And remember, you're under oath. <laughs> well, frankly, uh, she's a minister's now, daughter. Call me Groucho, huh? <laughs> she's... Frankly, left about ten minutes ago. <laughs> She's a minister's daughter, and, uh, and I happen to be taking the collection. Oh, you, you, did you take the whole collection? <laughs> no, there, there were two of us. Oh. <laughs> I see. Well, you split it, huh? <laughs> Tell me, uh, isn't it customary to turn in something to the church? <laughs> well, we try to turn in all of it. Oh, I see. In any event, uh, while taking the collection, she, uh, she asked me how was business, and... <laughs> You mean she was a crook, too? <laughs> well, anyhow, you must have got the wedding for nothing, didn't you? No, I, I had to you had pay, to pay for that. You had to pay your old man? So did you get a rebate later on? <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, are, are you married, Mrs. Watkins? You've been calling me, Mrs. <laughs> I'm married and nobody calls me Mrs. How'd you meet your husband, uh, Mrs. Watkins? Well, I was working at the Denver Dry Goods in the ladies' suit and dress department. So one day the buyer says, well, won't you take some down to the window trimmer? So I went down there, and uh, I didn't hear the window trimmers come back. And finally, uh, one of them says to the other, well, where did that new dummy come from anyway? <laughs> turns around, I was very angry, and I says, well, I'm no dummy, and here's your dresses, and I walked out. And he says, well, you don't need to get so mad, do you? And what'd you say? And I said, yes, if you come up in our department, we treat you nice. And what was your department? <laughs> Ladies' dress department. Ladies' dress department. Yes. Huh? Now, Bill, uh, Bill Ritzy, as the district attorney, just what do you do? Well, I'm not the district attorney, I'm a district attorney. The question was, what do you do? <laughs> Not what are you? And as long as you brought it up, what's the difference between the district attorney and a district attorney? Well, uh, I'm under the district attorney. <laughs> Must get pretty stuffy under there. Huh? <laughs> well, as an assistant uh, DA, uh, uh, what do you do as an assistant district attorney? Well, I'm, I'm not an assistant district attorney. I'm a, I'm a deputy district attorney. Don't tell me you're under him, too, huh? <laughs> yes, I am. Well, you're, it sounds to me you're, you're low man on the totem pole. Right? <laughs> well, what do you do as a deputy district attorney? So far, you haven't done anything. Right? <laughs> you're going to sleep under two men, right? We prosecute criminal cases. I happen to be d assigned to one of the trial divisions, and... Do you handle burglaries? Yes. Have you ever been caught? <laughs> where, where do you get your business, D.A.? Uh, do you advertise in the newspaper? <laughs> like uh, Crook Wanted? Uh... No, about 95% uh, per percent of our business comes in from the various police departments here in the county, and, of course, the rest come in from private citizens. Well, sounds pretty reasonable. Huh? <laughs> Anything going on in your neighborhood, Mrs. Watkins, that you'd like to bring to the attention of the district attorney? No, not that I can think of. You mean all is serene in your life? Uh, well, can't you think of anything you'd like to complain about? Not all. The lady on my party line just talks too much. <laughs> She keeps talking, and uh, I suppose you don't get a chance to use the telephone. No, huh? I don't. Uh -oh. Sometimes 10, 15, 20 minutes. What, is, what do they talk about? Huh? Oh, she's always talking about what... I think we got a case here for the DA. <laughs> the district attorney, what's the penalty for wiretapping? <laughs> well, uh, I've grilled our district attorney, but it was all in fun. Nobody knows any better than I do what a great job the district attorney does for the taxpayer. Now you... Please, don't laugh at that, huh? That's to square me with the cops. Now you're going to play your bet your life for $3,500. You beat our other couples and you get a chance at the big question later. I can't tell you how much the first couple won, but Fenneman's offstage to remind our listeners. The 33-year-old high school girl and her partner won $170.
Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected capitals of Latin American countries as your category, right? All right. You have $20. How much are you going to bet and talk right into the microphone and loud? $10. $10. Here's your first question. What is the capital city of Peru? Lima. Lima is right. <laughs> and they're on their way with $30. All but 10. You're going to bet, you're going to bet $20. Is yeah. that right? What is the capital city of Argentina? Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires is right. <laughs> you now have fifty dollars, that? About the whole fifty. The whole fifty. All right. What is the capital city of Chile? C H I L E. Santiago. Santiago is right. <laughs> They're really climbing now. They have one hundred dollars. All right. You got a hundred dollars. Is your last chance to be the other couples? How much you have the hundred? Will you bet? Bet it all. All right. What is the capital city of Ecuador? Uh, Quito. Quito is right. <laughs> And they wind up with $200. Hey, watch yourself. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, it won't be long before we meet the last couple, and then we know who gets the chance at the $3,500 question. Fenneman, who's ahead? The deputy district attorney and the housewife with $200. And the secret word is still table. We invited some dog trainers... And some piano teachers for the show tonight. And here come the two selected to be on our show with the studio audience just before we went on the air. Mr. Carl Spitz and Mrs. Inez Murray meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mrs. Uh, Murray, is that right? Yes. Inez Murray? Yes. Uh, you're a piano teacher, huh? Yes, I am. Very attractive piano teacher, huh? I've been thinking of taking up the piano lately. I'd love to have you. And Mr. Spitz, you're the dog trainer? Yes. <laughs> well, there's been a horrible mistake here. We asked for a dog trainer and we got a dog. <laughs> Spitzenberg? <laughs> no, quite a bit distance from Spitzbergen. I'm Where? from near Heidelberg in Germany. Oh, well, you must be a beer expert, huh? <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, miss, uh, are you married, Ina? Yes, I am. You are. How, how'd you meet your husband? Oh, it was very unromantic at first. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> how long was it unromantic? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Uh, mutual friends arranged a meeting. The friends said, we think you two musicians should meet each other. Oh, what does he, what does he play? He's a pianist, too. Did you have the piano movers uh, carry you over the threshold when you got married? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Spitz, you're, you're the dog trainer, is that right? So far, yes. <laughs> well, then we can start from scratch now. <laughs> Now, I want to ask you a question. You're a dog trainer. Is it true a barking dog never bites? Not as long as he bites. <laughs> well, they say every dog has his day. <laughs> he certainly doesn't seem to be mine. <laughs> What's the best age to start training dogs, Mr. Spitz? Oh, about eight months. You mean you've been training dogs since you were eight months old? <laughs> I mean, the dog is eight months old. Well, that's better. After all, after eight months, you weren't very well trained yourself. <laughs> now, tell me, Chopsticks, what are some of the typical... Uh, <laughs> the typical excuses your students give you for not practicing? Oh, heavens. There are thousands of them. <laughs> well, give us 900, huh? <laughs> Daddy sleeps all day. The keys of the piano are stuck, won't sound. <laughs> what sort of excuses do your dogs use to get out of their lessons? <laughs> well, the dogs have no excuses. I thought they might say, excuse me, but I have to see a dog about a man. <laughs> what makes one dog vicious and one dog gentle, Mr. Spitz? Well, fundamental, I don't think there's any vicious dog. They Not if you're on the mantle, no, but I mean... <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Do dogs ever become psychiatric cases? <laughs> Do they have dog psychologists? Yes. Which dogs make the best psychologists? <laughs> I suppose the dog lies on a couch and talks about the days when he was a kitten, huh? <laughs> Well, let's get back to you, Arpeggiola. Uh, do you think you could uh, teach me to play the piano, Ines? Yes, I'm sure I could. Could you sing a scale? Scale? I think so. Would you join me in a duet? Uh, yeah. Huh? All right, yeah. here we go. One, two, three. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si, do. Yeah, that was beautiful, I know. <laughs> From now on, that will be our song. <laughs> now you're going to play the DeSoto Plymouth game, you bet your life. And if you beat our other two couples, you'll get a crack at the $3,500 question. I can't tell you how much they won, but George is off stage to remind our listeners. The deputy district attorney and the housewife were ahead with $200. Here we go. Let's say Ohio can build you $20. You selected royalty as your category. Is that right? You have $20. How much are you going to try? Ten. What is the name of the emperor of Japan? Hirohito. Hirohito. <laughs> now they have $30. $30. Remember, you're going for $3,500 tonight. How much of the 30 will you try? Should we try 20 What is the name of the exiled king of Belgium? Uh, king Leopold. Leopold is right. <laughs> They're climbing now. They have $50. You got $50? Here's your third question. How much of the 50 are you going to try? You decide. <laughs> 25 Okay. The little king of Italy abdicated his throne in 1946 and died a year later. What was his name? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Victor Emmanuel is right. <laughs> they now have $75. Well, you got $75. How much of the 75 will you go for? 50 What is the name of the emperor of Ethiopia? Haile Selassie. Haile Selassie, happy land. And they wind up with $125, and that means the deputy district attorney and the housewife get the chance to DeSoto Plymouth $3,500 question. A while back, I suggested that you folks drive in and get acquainted with a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. While you're there, visit the service shop. Notice the fine equipment. This equipment is there for you, for use on your car. Every DeSoto Plymouth dealer has special tools and equipment in his shop, the kind you won't find just anywhere. These tools and equipment are factory designed and approved. In the hands of skilled mechanics, you'll find these tools can save hours of time on a job. They help a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's service experts do better work faster. That, of course, means money in your pocket, as well as a car that serves you faithfully and economically mile after mile. So visit that DeSoto Plymouth dealer real soon, will you? Get to know the folks in the office, the men in the shop, and you'll find that this knowledge will be a big comfort in the thousands of car miles that lie ahead of you. Tomorrow, drive in at the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And remember... All dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. And here is the housewife and the deputy district attorney, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $3,500 question, Groucho. All right, here we go for $3,500. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on one single answer between you, so think carefully and please, no help from the audience. Here it is. There is only one active volcano in the United States. What is this volcano? What's the answer you two have decided upon? I'm going to take a guess. Mount Lassen. Mount Lassen is right. Hey! Yeah. That's right. You win $3,500. What are you going to do with all that money? 
What are you going to do with all that money? Well, I got a house that needs going over from top to bottom. Well, I'll, go, I'll go over it for $3,000. I'll go under it for $2,000. What about you, D.A.? What are you going to do with the money? Give that money back in the church? <laughs> no. What are you going to do with this, Luca? We, uh, we haven't any youngsters yet, but I'm sure we are going to have some. And that's... <laughs> well, let's see. You win $3,500 plus $200 in the quiz. You say you really cleaned up tonight, huh? <laughs> Congratulations from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You bet your life. You bet your life. It's a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week, the big question will be worth $1,000. Well, it's almost time for Bing Crosby, so good night, folks. And remember... Just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here's a tip from the National Safety Council. The highway is no place for a surprise party. Always signal when you stop, slow down, turn, or change direction. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Yes, because I've never found anyone yet who could not learn if he had the correct technical work. You should have been out here about ten minutes ago. <laughs> You'd be licking your wounds now, Lucia. <laughs> All right, how would you teach me, Lucia? <laughs> boom, 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 that's Lucia. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Well, to begin with, uh, correct breathing. <laughs> Yes, uh, inhaling, inhaling. Uh, deeply, relaxation, so the air will keep coming. There you are. You pick that out, Lucia, and be sure Paul gets 50 of it, huh? Well, cadenza, are all singers alike, or is there a difference between them? Oh, certainly. What kind of voices do singers have? Well, of course, to begin with, our first classification is there are women's voices and men's voices. Well, uh, oh, well I didn't know that. I must tell this to this uh, <laughs> Suppose I wanted to get up a lady quartet. Could I find one who sings bass? No. The contralto is as low as a lady goes. You are not. We haven't been out with the same kind of lady. <laughs> now, Paul, let's talk about golf. How long do you have to be a pro before you can become an amateur? Oh, no, my mistake. That's tennis. I was thinking of... What is your favorite club? The Annandale Golf Club of Pasadena. What's your best score for 18 holes? On a regulation 18-hole championship for 61 at the Forest Hill Field Club in Bloomfield, New Jersey. How about, uh, what does the average golfer go around with? I think 95 to 100. How about the girls? Don't some of the girls do better than that? Oh, good many of the girls go around and a great deal less. <laughs> Is your club open 
open up in the morning. <laughs> I remember the first time I played golf, I went around in 75. I didn't play at all in 76. I was busy as always was. <laughs> How can I improve my score? I shoot around 94. That's for cheating. <laughs> I think I'd advise you to take a few lessons from a confident instructor, do I've a little practicing, I've and a little lessons. playing. I've taken lessons. It's hopeless. <laughs> well, how could I learn to win without playing well? <laughs> you might, uh, you might resort to a little pencil pushing, or you might have a hole in your pocket, or you might have a handy toe in the rough, or you might use a hand mashing more frequently. How is it you know so much about those things? <laughs> Tell me about that pencil pushing again, huh? First of all, you have to forget to count over five. On any hole? Any hole. What about the uh, 540 at Hillcrest? Well, I think you could still forget to count over five. <laughs> yes, but on the other hand, don't forget, he still has to be Gussie Moran. <laughs> Well, you can't blame a girl for trying, I always say. As a matter of fact, I never said that before in my life. I don't know why I lie this way. Eh? Would, you, would you get married tonight if the right man came along and uh, knocked you off your feet? Oh, I think I would. You would. Look out for Ding Dong Daddy, are you? He can knock you off your feet and charge you 11 cents car fare at the same time. Well, you certainly make a nice couple. Just remember, none but the brave deserve the fair, Jack. Always remember that, huh? And you're just the one to collect it. Now, we're going to play You Bet Your Life for $2,000. All right, now let's see if you two will get a chance at the $2,000. Phantom, explain the rules. All right. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $2,000 question at the end of the show. You see, our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. All right, here we go. Let's say I'll hide and build you $20. You selected birds, animals, and people as your category. Now, here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you try? $10. $10. What animal do you associate with Jonah? The whale. The whale is right. Now, talk right up. <laughs> you got $30. Remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. Now, how much of the 30 will you try? Uh, 20 20 What animal do you associate with the Pied Piper? Oh, uh... <laughs> Take a look at Jack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they followed it up to see. Uh, the Piper. Well, I, I'm, I'm sorry. It's wrapped. You, you, yeah. you were on the right track. How much have they got now? They now have $10, Groucho. Well, that's a shame. Ooh, You're down that's to $10. A shame without All right. $10. Here's your third question. How much of the time will you try? $5. $5. Is that all right, Jack? Uh -huh. What animal do you associate with Daniel and the Bible? Um, lion. Lion. The lion is right. Huh? Well, the again, you have $15. <laughs> all right, you got $15, and here's your last chance to be the other couple. How much of the 15 will you risk? Well, let's take 10 $10. $10. What animal do you associate with Lady Godiva? Oh, the horse. That's right, a horse is correct. <laughs> and they wind up with a grand total of $25. Don't forget, you won how much? $25. $25. You won $100. That's $125. Thanks and good luck. <laughs> Well, Groucho, our, our next couple has been in a waiting room off stage, so, of course, they don't know the secret word is air. True, true. Okay, fellas, you can bring them in now. We invited some lady barbers to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Maybelle Taylor. Her partner is a married man, Mr. Thomas DeSilver. And here they are, folks. I'd like you to meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life, and if you say the secret word, you'll spend $100 between you. It's the common word, something you always have with you. Uh, Maybelle Taylor, is that right? That's right. And, uh, Thomas De Silva. You're a lady barber, Maybelle? That's right. Where, where are you from, Mabel? Montana. Montana? Where about? Tobacco, Montana. And, uh, Thomas De Silva, you're, you're a married man, huh? That's right. Is that your only claim to distinction, Thomas? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what sort of work do you do, Tommy? Retired police captain. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm glad I found that out. How long have you been married? Sixteen years. Do you remember how you met your wife, huh? Yes, but it's a long story. 
Well, keep it down to 1,500 words, will you? <laughs> Mabel, I know just how your customers feel. <laughs> My head is bloody but unbowed. <laughs> well, all right, now we're going to play you bet your life, huh? Now, uh, we'll see how you two uh, make out in the battle for the $2,000. You've got to work together as a team and run your $20, and the more than our other couple. I can't tell you how much the other couple's won, but Phantom is going to remind our listeners. The Bachelor and the Spinster won $25. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected nicknames of famous cities as your category. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you try? Tommy, wake up. $10. You're going to ignore Mabel, huh? <laughs> what city is known as the city of brotherly love? Philadelphia. Philadelphia. That's where you... Bill and Roy Grocker, they have $30. $30. Remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. Now, how much of the 30 will you try? Mm -hmm. Talk right up. Right Make that. it 20 All right. What city is known as the biggest little city in the world? Reno, Nevada. Reno, Nevada is right. All right, you folks are really calling now. Now, $50. Major third question. Now, how much will you bet? 50 50 What city is known as the Mile High City? Denver, Colorado. Denver, Colorado. You'll climb as high as Denver, Colorado. Now, here's your last chance to beat the other couple. How much of the hundred will you try? Let it go. The last question. Yes, yes here's the last question. Let it go. Let it go. You're going to shoot the works, huh? Eh? What city yeah. is known as the Smoky City? Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh is right. You can bring our next contestant. We invited to the show tonight some professional golfers and some singing teachers. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Lucia Liberette and Mr. Paul Runyon. And here they come. Folks, I'd like you to meet Roger Martin. <laughs> Welcome to your Bet Your Life, folks. And if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Lucia Liberette, huh? You're a singing teacher. Sounds like a pretty good racket, uh, Lucia. Where are you from? Sing Sing? <laughs> I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, huh? Yes, you sir. sing the St. Louis blues? <laughs> well, no, not quite. Paul Runyon, it's nice to see you again. I'm sure everyone is familiar with your name. What did you say your name was? <laughs> Paul Runyon. Paul Runyon, huh? See, there, even you're familiar with it, huh? <laughs> well, let's see. You won the Davis Cup, the Whiteman Cup, and the men's singles at Forest Hills, didn't you? Uh... <laughs> you may have a good memory, but those are tennis terms. Oh, wrong racket. What are some of your titles? <laughs> What are some of your titles, Paul? I was fortunate enough to win the uh, National Professional Golfers Championship in 1934 and 1938. That's pretty good for a little fellow like that, huh? All famous golfers had nicknames before. What's yours? Little Poison. Little Poison, huh? They call me Big Schlemiel, huh? <laughs> why, why did they call you Little Poison, uh, Paul? Well, perhaps it's because I have been the thorn in the side of some heavier adversaries. Very well put, Paul. <laughs> and, uh, Lucia, you, uh, what kind of singing do you teach? Opera and classical and semi-classic. You mean they have to study to scream like that? Huh? <laughs> Tell me, Rigoletto, can you teach anyone to sing? To be in Pittsburgh a week from next Wednesday. <laughs> okay, go ahead. How'd you meet your wife? We went down to Wildwood, New Jersey. Got a couple of bathing suits and took her down to Wildwood, New Jersey. Put a bathing suit on and then I gave her the engagement ring. <laughs> You're a pretty shrewd cookie, aren't you? Huh? <laughs> so I was seen her in the bathing suit and I started a singing proposal to her. You sang a proposal? Well, how did you sing a proposal to her? I'd be calling the sweetheart and gave her the engagement ring. Would you mind singing a no, you were... Singing? Oh! Well, go ahead. <laughs> Let me call you, sweetheart. I'm in love with you. <laughs> Let me hear you whisper that you love me.
And she consented to marry you after that? Well, that's the first time I ever years. sang a chorus in five keys. <laughs> now, Mabel, are you married? No, I'm not. You're not married, huh? Would you get married to a man who sang like that to you? <laughs> Certainly. I never met a lady barber before. Aren't they pretty rare? Well, I'd say there's uh, possibly 15 of us in the city of Los Angeles. No, that's medium rare. Now, what made you decide? <laughs> what made you decide to become a barber? Or a tonsorial artist, is that I uh, wanted to make money enough to see myself through nurses' training. And? I'm still barbering. <laughs> What's the difference between a lady barber and a man barber? Uh, there's several. There are several differences? There's several differences. Well, I'm relieved to hear that. You better clarify it, Mabel. There's a hind of Idaho who may have forgotten. <laughs> Well, we have a lighter touch, and uh, we don't talk an ear off of you. What do you do? Just shave it off, huh? <laughs> I suppose you have a scrapbook where you keep all your clippings, Mabel? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Do any of your customers flirt with you, Mabel? The male customers? Uh, well, they're not really serious with me. And how do you handle these Romeos? Oh, I... Um, they like it. Well, how do you kid them? Do you tell them jokes? Yes, occasionally. Tell us a joke. Go ahead. Pretend, <laughs> pretend I'm sitting in your chair and you want me to forget how much all this is going to cost me. Now you go ahead and tell me a joke. Do you know the best way to save your hair? Yes, put it in a cigar box. That's an old joke. <laughs> do you know a way tell to... me another joke, huh? Do you know a way to avoid falling hair? Yes, just step nimbly to one side. Huh? <laughs> That's even older than the other joke. Huh? <laughs> you know any more jokes, uh, Mabel? No, I believe not. Go on, admit it. I'm too fast for you, huh, Mabel. <laughs> well, well grass, your uh, hair is getting a little bit thin. Yeah, well, uh, grass doesn't grow on a busy street, yeah, Mabel. <laughs> I'm going to say that grass doesn't grow on a cement highway either. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is air. A-I-R. Really? You bet your life! And here he is. The one, the only... Groucho! That's me, Groucho Marx. <laughs> With $2,000 for one of our couples tonight. Fenneman, who's place to try for it? Well, a bachelor and a spinster, Groucho, selected by our studio audience just before we went on the air. Land six. Uh, their names are Ida Easley and Jack Wayne. And here they come now. One in here, folks, to meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, kids. And if Thank you say the secret word, you'll divide a hundred dollars in cash. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Uh, Ida Easley, huh? Ida Easley. Oh, that's an easy name to remember. <laughs> You're the Spencer, eh? I am. Mm -hmm. Let me see your spend. <laughs> Where are you from, Ida? I'm from Taylorville, Illinois. Where? Taylorville, Illinois. Taylorville? Did you have a, a job, Ida? I'm a matron of the Douglas Aircraft Company. <laughs> <laughs> Ida, of course you realize that half of that swag belongs to Mr. Yes, Wayne over here, huh? <laughs> I think he's more worried than I am, so well. I have a hold of it. <laughs> well, eventually he may be holding you and the $50, eh? Well, Jack, uh, I will tell. Well, what do, you, what do you do, Jack? Oh, I run a streetcar. Uh, where are you from, uh, Jack? In Hard, one heart of Boston. Why did you leave the uh, bean town? Oh, my feet get itchy now in the room. You went to Rome, and how'd you like it there? <laughs> Where do you run your trolley? On the track. <laughs> Caught me napping, eh? <laughs> I suppose that's one of the little jokes you streetcar men use to amuse each other back in the car barn, is that it? That's an old joke. There it is. Well, it may, it may interest you to know that while you're knocking each other out back in the car barn, the city's pulling up the track to make way for a bus line. <laughs> Jack, how 
come you're a bachelor? Is it because in your job you see too much of women? Oh, I see plenty of them. You do, huh? You could see a lot more of them if you step off your streetcar and watch them climb on. <laughs> get on the last. I think it's politeness, but it isn't real. <laughs> Jack, if you found the right woman, would you be interested in matrimony? <laughs> oh, I guess I would. What would I... you consider the right woman? Oh, a housekeeper, a good housekeeper, a good cook. <laughs> and I go to a ball game with me once in a while. Oh. You don't need one girl. What you need is a YWCA, Jack. <laughs> Do you, Ida, if that isn't too... Uh, oh, impressive. I think I'm about his age. <laughs> Frankly, you don't care how old he is, do you? Huh? <laughs> You're his age anyway, no matter how old he is. No matter how old he is. Are you a good cook, Ida? Well, I think I'm good. You like baseball? Oh, very much. You follow it uh, quite closely? Yes, I keep up the game. I see. Well, I'm an average fan, too. What do you think of Sugar Ray Robinson's chances this year? Huh? <laughs> Do you think he's going to break Babe Ruth's record? Oh, I think he has a very good chance. 